In the last video we created the login flow and the registration flow for the front end of our application. In this video we start creating the back end of that app. We will build the REST API for the user registration flow, so we will get the information, register the user and save its details on the database. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to follow the development of this real app using the Ionic framework and now the Nest JS framework for the backend. Most of the applications have two sides, the client side and the server side. Until now, everything we developed was related to the client side, which is responsible for the user interaction. It is basically everything the user sees and touches. We created the front end of our application using the Ionic framework and the Firebase authentication tool. Now we came to a point where we need to implement the server side of the app, which is the place where the main logic of the app should happen. For the back end we use the Nest.js framework, which is a framework built on top of Node.js. And for the database we use the Firestore database. Alright, so let's set up a new project using the Nest.js framework. First, we need to install the command line interface of Nest.js. To do this, we can tell npm to install globally the Nest.js CLI. Alright, now we have access to all the commands Nest.js gives to us. They help us create the project itself and the controllers, modules, services and so on for that project. To create a new project, we have to tell the Nest CLI to make a new project called Hesiklika Server. Now it asks me which package manager I want to use for this project. As I'm using npm for everything, I'll just continue with it. In order to run it, I'll enter the Hesiklika Server folder and tell npm to run the start dev. We can see what the start dev command does in the package.json file. It basically does the same thing as the start command, but it adds the flag watch. With this flag, all the changes I make in the code will rerun the start of the backend, which means I will not need to stop it and start it again to be able to see my changes. Alright, here in the main.ts file, we can see that our backend app is being created and then the backend app is listening to the port 3000. This means that to make a call to the backend, we will need to use the port 3000. Let me go to the browser and make our first call. I will enter the URL localhost 3000 and after I press enter, we see the message hello world on the screen. Cool, so let's understand what's happening from the beginning until the point we get this hello world on the screen. When we tell npm to start the application, the code of the main.ts file is run. Notice it declares a function and then this function is called. In this line, the nest factory class creates the app and uses the app module for it. After this app is created, it starts listening to every request made on the port 3000. Alright, so let's take a look at the app module file. A module is responsible for organizing the application structure. This module here needs a controller, which is the app controller, and a provider, which is the app service. Let's take a look at the app controller. Controllers are responsible for handling the request made by the client, and it's also responsible for returning a response to the client. In this case, the controller is handling the request made from the browser, which is the URL localhost 3000. Then the controller responds with the hello world text we see in the screen. The controllers can handle different routes on their requests. In this example, we have a controller that's handling the base route, which is localhost 3000. Let me show you an example of the controller handling a different route. If I come to the browser and I put slash users in the URL, then we'll see that we get an error message saying that this was not found. Now let me tell this controller to handle the route users. Now if I go back to the browser, I'll get the same response as before. The function that's being executed when I make this call is the get hello function. Here on the top of it, you can see this function is using the get decorator. With this, we are expecting that this function will be called when a request with the URL users and the get HTTP method is made. If I go back to the browser and I put a hello on the URL, we again see the not found error. But if I put a hello as the routing of that function, then everything works again. 
Notice that to achieve this I could also add the hello on the controller level and remove the function level. By having this I can have multiple routings for the same controller. An example would be having the controller routing as users, the get hello routing as hello, and creating a new function called get hello to with the routing hello to and adding something to its response so we can distinguish both of them. If I go to the browser, then we can see that hello returns the same, but hello2 returns the other response. Cool, and finally we have the service, which is basically responsible for having the logic of the app and the communication with the database. What this service does is just to return the hello world string. Now I'm returning a string, but I could also return an object here, so let's give it a try. Cool, so we covered the main flow now. Let's take a look at the other files we have. Inside of the test folder, we have files for end-to-end -end tests. Different from unit tests, which test an unit of the code alone, like a test for the controller, a test for the service, and so on, end-to-end -end tests test multiple units of the code together, like what's being done here. We are calling our app base URL using the get HTTP method and expecting that the response code is 200 and the response body is hello world. Moving on, we have the nest cli.json file which defines the commands we can run using nest. We also have the package.json file which defines the dependencies of our project and the scripts we can use to run, test, build or analyze the code. And finally we have the tsconfig files which we use to configure the use of TypeScript which is basically JavaScript with superpowers. Alright, I'll now put this project on a public repository on GitHub so you can download it to your computer and check it yourself. You'll also be able to get all the changes I'll make to this project. The link will be available on the description below. So let me explain what we are gonna build on the next videos. Now our front end needs to make a call to our back end and the back end needs to register the user, save its information on the database and return a successful response to the front end. In the next video, we will start implementing the REST API to do this. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to follow the development of this real app using the Ionic framework and Nest.js and see you on the next video.